Hi, Caleb with Brownells here. And today I'm joined with Troy from Midwest Industries back again. Troy, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So again, if you've uh, watched any of our videos in the past, you're, you're already familiar with who Midwest Industries is and who Troy is. But uh, we've got something a little bit different here. Something we touched on a little bit last time you were out, but we didn't really go into too much detail on. And that is, uh, that's the AK Alpha stuff. Yep. Um, what do you want to know about it? Everything. Like, first, I want to know why. Like, why did you make this stuff, and what makes it different than the other AK accessories out there? Okay, so we've been doing AK handguards for 15 years. Right. We came out with the first universal handguard. They still sell real well. They've got a lot of uh, really cool features to them, but we wanted to kind of take the stuff to the next level after all these years. And we've come out with some other generations of handguards, but we've had pluses and minuses to everything over the years and you kind of learn how things go. Yeah. Um, and we wanted something that was modular, M-lock. Um, we kind of put some parameters down. Modular, M-lock, slim, uh, heat shields, QD sockets, easy installation, um, it could lead into either a top cover or a red dot mount and in a couple different lengths. Yeah. Um, we didn't really get into the, we kind of stayed with the, sta the standard AKM stamp pattern guns as the, uh, the base model. To, sure. But it had to fit a wide variety of stamped AKMs, not just one or two models. It yeah. had to be very versatile. There's a lot out there. So we started in on this whole thing with those parameters in mind, and it took us right around, by the time it was all said and done, about two years of work. Okay, wow. So these are what we came up with for hand guards, and then we also dove into a stock. So basically what we have for the Alpha hand guards, like I said, they're... They're either a 10 inch version or a six inch version, which comes to here. Um, they're M-Lock. We have a built-in heat shield in them. Um, one of the big challenges with AKs, and you'll see it on some of the imported ones, is around the collar here. A lot of handguards will just have a little bolt-on bridge yeah. in order to keep rigidity in the front. Right, yeah. That really is kind of a Band-Aid, in my opinion. We actually machined out and uh, modeled out that area with the machining center to keep that strength in there. Yeah. Um, we have our scallops on there that we put into a lot of hand guards. Um, now this hand guard, one of the other cool things we did with it, even though you can run a heat shield in our top cover, if you have like an Ultimac or a MI railed gas tube, you can run this hand guard just the bottom. Yeah, and take the cool. top off and run your Ultimac if you want it. That's awesome. So it makes it, you know, we tried putting all that versatility into these things as we could. And obviously we wanted to make it affordable, you know, sure. mid-tier price. Right, right. And uh, I don't know other than that, it's just they had to be super rigid. Yeah, and I'll say this. I've installed a lot of different AK handguards, and I've install installed some that were a lot more expensive than this and a lot more difficult to install than this one. And I honestly, the end quality was just inferior. I'm not, I'm not gonna say any names or anything, but this is just a, I mean, this is an awesome handguard. And when you look at the price, I was, I was blown away what they actually sell at for the quality you get. Yeah, they're not import priced. I mean, everything like we make is American made. Sure, yeah. But they are extremely rigid and solid. And the weight is manageable, so they're not overly heavy. Right. You can take an AK, though, and you can make them, you know, you throw enough stuff sure. on them, you can make sure. them really heavy. But um, the heat's manageable after mags, yeah. you know. Th this one's pretty toasty. We were just shooting it this morning. We, we just got back from the range here. Um, and, yeah, I, that, that's one of the things I noticed. Even though we were shooting the heck out of it. The heat, uh, you could feel it getting warm, but it wasn't it wasn't uncomfortable. Yeah, you can get anything hot if your cadence is fast enough and sure. there's a high enough round count. But we definitely, there was another parameter there that we wanted to uh, try to address that we wanted to have something that was in normal circumstances manageable that you didn't have to wear gloves. Yeah. 
So um, these hand guards bolt right onto the standard caps in the front. There's no cutting caps off anymore. Yeah. Um, you can take the you know can put this thing on and then literally in an hour, not even an hour, you can take it off and put your factory wood right back on it again. Yep. It doesn't permanently change anything on your gun. Yeah, which is which is great. Yep. And another thing I kind of wanted to talk about here, because if you if you look at these two AKs, you'll notice the main difference is you know where these hand guards are attaching in the back here. This one just comes around the rear sight and has an optic mount, but this one's actually attaching to this dust cover. Yeah, that's a tricky part. That part took me, I've been wanting to do a dust cover for like 10 years and I dabbled with it on and off and on and off for a very long time. And it's very tricky to control the movement of that cover. Yeah. And the other thing you have to do is have adjustability for the different guns. Yeah. Because this slot is not the same on every gun. Right. And You'd think it would be, but the, the receiver lengths vary. Right, yeah. In length. And people are like, oh, no, they're, they're not that, they vary. Yeah, I And mean, you gotta be able to have this thing fit in here and have adjustability. So the cover itself needed adjustability front to rear to accommodate the rear locating portion where the cover goes into. Yeah. So we have adjustability up here in this trunnion area that allows the cover to slide back and forth just enough to make sure everything fits. With that and our shape of the button and the uh, interfacing pocket in the cover is what controls everything. And we have six patents right now pending on this setup. Um, so it it works very well. Yeah, and that was an interesting piece because this button isn't your standard recoil spring guide. They they provide one, and you have you install it with this top cover. So that it has to fits. be it has to work together. Yeah, and even ten years ago, we didn't have the machine tools to make that button and that cover. Yeah, these are all made on state of the art five axis machining centers awesome. that is doing a lot of movements in order to make that shape. Cause this is a compound angle yep, I, I, in I, the I cover noticed. and the button that not only locks it down, it also locks it side to side. So it, when this, when the spring comes back and pushes on the button, it's pushing the cover down and locating it side to side to keep that thing right in the exact spot it needs to be to repeat zero. Yeah, and that's awesome because I like I've installed a lot of dust covers as well, uh, rail dust covers, and that's it's interesting. No one's doing that. That's that's pretty unique. Well, other guys do something that's similar, right? But they'll just lock it in one way. Yeah, yeah. we locked it in both ways. Right, and uh, it worked really well. It took us a long time to figure it out. Yeah, and for those of you who aren't familiar, um, the AK dust cover, the standard one, like this one over here, it's just a standard, it's just a piece of sheet metal. And if you were to bolt a rail to the top of that one, it you wouldn't be able to zero it. It's just, it, it doesn't fit on there tight. So in order to make something you can mount an optic on, it has to be tight, it has to fit perfect. And uh, that's kind of, that's, that's, the, that's why they did what they did to make this thing lock down so tight. And you have to control the front too. Yes. I mean, the front, is a, the front is a very important part to control also. Um, if you look at this block, this block, this trunnion block we call it, is made of steel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and the, the outside, you know, these little struts we call them, they're supported not only here, but they're steel struts that run on an angle down and tie into the handguard. So there's multi points of location and rigidity that keep this thing as a one solid unit. Yeah, so you do have to run this dust cover with the full hand. Yes, you can't yep. run it solo. Yep, okay, so that's... But the one thing with our covers or our red dot mounts, and we made it one of the things that we had to do and retain was the use of factory iron sights. Right. So you don't have to remove your factory iron sights. They're, they stay right where they need to be. Yeah, so we did a full installation video on this thing, and one of the first things I got ready to do was to remove that rear sight. So I was like, oh, well, all this stuff on there, that rear sight's probably got to come off. Um, but I was surprised that it was retained. And the upper uh, plate, the pick rail's cut, so you can still see yep. that iron sight. So if for whatever reason you have an optic go down, you can just throw it off of there, and you're still good to go on either one of these, which is, which is awesome. Okay, and another thing we did with the uh, top cover 
if you look at the ejection port area, on AKs, you know, they've got some pretty big areas here to let dirt in and stuff like that. Yes. Junk, whatever. Um, we tightened up the areas of the clearance to try to minimize the amount of dirt that's let in. There's still plenty of clearance for the gun to remain reliable, but we have everything shut off nice and tight when the safety's up and there's even a little bit of extra material right here in the ejection port to uh, keep debris out of there. This is like, this is some big brain stuff going on here. It, it, it's almost like you shoot AKs or something. We, we shoot a lot of stuff, but we try to be over the, over the two years of development and testing, yeah. we just kept going back to the drawing board and adding features and what about this and that and just kept bullet pointing stuff and yeah. trying to get it as best as possible. Um, the, we call these things legacy parts now at the shop because it's like we put so much effort and thought, design work. Um, every time we'd go to the range, we'd have debriefs, team meetings, and we'd all go through what we thought was good, what we thought was bad make another prototype, test it again. So yeah. so I'll, I'll be honest, it's been a little bit since I've really like got down and shot an AK, uh, but these were some really smooth shooting guns. Even, I mean, I can imagine you started with some, some guns that are actually pretty decent. And I noticed the gun, so let's just talk about the guns real quick here. So people sure. kind of, the, the customers can get an idea of, you know, the kind of stuff that we're putting this, these things on. And here we have, what I would consider to be the yeah, AK. these are both pretty Cadillac guns. That so that's a rifle dynamic. Yep. Uh, anyone who's familiar with that name, if you're not, do a quick Google search of who Rifle Dynamics is, um, and you'll understand why I'm kind of geeking out about this one a little bit. But this one here kind of surprised me. So Palmetto State Armory mm -hmm. PSA. Yep. They are what what would be considered more of an. Uh, affordable AR brand, even though they are getting into some more Gucci ARs. Yep. Um, but this this is a really nice AK. They make some good AKs. I mean, this we is... we use a wide variety of guns, probably 20 different AKs by at least 10 different makes. And we have quite a few PSA guns in the inventory and they make some really consistently good AKs right now. Yeah, so I mean, we can just give a quick shout out to PSA yeah. for me. I mean, even like the factory parts on this gun, not the Midwest parts, are just well done. It just looks good. Absolutely. I mean, say what you want. If they they make good stuff right now with the AKs, I think they really got it going on. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, but with that being said, you can you can put this stuff on almost any AK. You've made it to be fit for everything. That's no milled thing. guns. No milled guns. Right? Stamped guns and. We fit them to the best of our ability to fit on everything that we sampled. Obviously, there's going to be guns out there that you're going to have to fit. Right. Because it's the world of AKs. Yeah. But we did a huge sampling, and we made the handguards with adjustability to work with that wide sampling, and we did the same thing with the top covers. Yeah. So there's enough of a... Um, a variety of or a movement in the parts to make it work. Um, there's a lot of a lot of measuring involved when we started this. And, I bet, yeah. And writing dimensions down. So. Yeah, and these two here are would be considered more modern AKs. Um, yeah, but if you look at the old, you know, we got Romax and we've got even like, uh, oh man, Modis. Yeah. Okay. You know the older guns. Yeah, they, it's, yeah, yeah. They're those are good guns and it's, they work on those. Yeah, and the one we did the installation video on here was an old 74. It was like an inner arms import or something. It was a, it's an older one, um, and everything went together fine. So, yeah, it, I mean, if, if they'll fit on that wide of a variety, especially like time range. I mean, like you said, it's AKs. They're, they're kind of unpredictable. Yeah, they're, they are. I mean, there's, a, there's so many manufacturers you can't even even fathom how many have been around over the last 20 years, you know? Yeah, yeah, but the, the And point, the quality, the quality's been oh, either the, <laughs> top or bottom, there's, so. There's some really good ones and there's some really bad ones out yep. there. I mean, just like anything else, really, if you think about it, so. Yep, but being an accessory manufacturer, you have to take that in consideration. You know, there's other handguards out there, and one of the biggest questions I get by guys now is, 
do they fit PSAs? Do they fit PSAs? Because I think there's a little, some other parts out there that the stuff doesn't fit the new PSA guns. Yeah. But the Alpha Series stuff fits the PSA stuff like a glove. Awesome. So. And another thing I kind of want to talk about here, um, let's talk about this this rear 1913 insert um, on that goes over this back trunnion here. So if you watch the installation video we did, the first thing we do is cut our standard stock tang off to put this 1913 mount on. Um, and let, tell me about that a little bit. How like So they have those tension blocks on the side. Yep, that kind of takes up the, the slop between the, the um, trunnion block or the Picatinny rail adapter and yep. the actual end of the receiver. Yeah, so all you gotta do is cut your tang off and this fits right on. And you don't have to use mid-wet, you can use any 1913 stock or you know whatever you wanna do on there. Um, but with that being said, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty straightforward piece. It's a great piece, it was a great idea. Um, let's talk about the, the stocks. So okay. the stocks themselves, I'll just you know kind of preface this real quick. You can get them in this alpha set up here. You can get them to take uh, M4 stocks. You can get them with the folder like this one here, or you can get them as a fixed. Um, so let, let's start just by talking about this alpha stock. So we've been making stocks for a while now. Mm -hmm. We had the, um, and the knuckle we come out with a couple years ago. Yeah. And it's been hugely successful and reliable, and we've had nothing but really good feedback on the knuckle. Um, it's steel. You can make it fold left or right. Yep. Um, it's beefy. It's got good tension, but not overly, you know, not too much tension. Right. Um, and we, with the with the regular folding stocks and the fixed stocks that we had on M4 buffer tubes and stuff like that that we came out with years ago. Yep. It's like, all right, well, how can we make a really Cadillac type rear sight or not rear sight stock? Yeah. You know, and so we did the same basic thing. What do we want it to do? We want it to collapse. We want it with an adjustable cheek piece for to get a good cheek weld if we're going to make an AK with a top cover. Um, we want it adjustable. Um, we wanted it a big, knurled, easy to, to get your finger on type button. Yep. Um, multiples, multiple positions. Um, so you can get enough length to pull or choke up on it if you want, if you're in a body armor or something. Um, there's a nice big lock mechanism in here with a lot of surface area for a solid type lock up in there. Yeah. Um, QD sockets, uh, nice rubber butt pad and have it adjustable a little bit for height on the butt pad. And uh, after six months of prototyping and testing and working on that, we came out with the Alpha stock and they've been in incredibly successful and we didn't want to make the stock uh just for a 4.5 or a 5.5 uh, rear trunnion sure yeah we wanted to make it specifically for a picatinny rail yeah there's so much stuff that's coming out with picatinny rails now that i didn't want to back us into a corner and be specific to one platform right yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, because we stuck this stock. First thing I put it on was our BRM 180. It's awesome on yeah. those guns. Oh man, it's great on those guns. But MPXs, MCXs, all those guns that you know, uh, back when the pistol brace thing was not a non-issue, so many guys were putting uh, tail hooks on them. Yep, I had a tail hook on one. And putting them on scorpions and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So MP5s. Oh man, that'd be cool on MP5. Yep, they're pretty cool on MP5s. Man. But yeah, we put them on all sorts of stuff. The new Scar uh, 16 pistol. Oh, okay. That. Oh man, I, I didn't even think about. It. Now I'm getting a mental picture, and I gotta I gotta do one. So. Man. But yeah, they've been a really popular addition to the Alpha lineup, and just are great overall. They're working out really well. They they almost remind me, like if I can even say this, of like the uh, the what was it, the Zenico PT series of uh, stocks, and. This is kind of, it's like what it reminds me of, except you can see that it's, I guess more American would be the best way to describe it. It's a lot more refined too. If you look at a Zenico stock, you know, there's no slam against them, but whatever it is, what it is. The, the locking mechanism, I think smoother on this one. Yeah. Our stock is built completely on the center line. So you can take this thing and completely, 
If you want the cheek piece overhang on the left, you can put it there. If you want it on the right, you can put it there. You can fold it to the left, you can fold it to the right. Yep. Everything is completely, you can mirror image it. You yeah. can left or right on any of the stuff. Yeah, and you know, for those of you wondering, we have a video on how to make your Midwest industry stock fold left or right. Um, and that applies, it, we did it on an older one, but that applies to this one as well. And this is probably, yeah, this actual knuckle here, this folding mechanism, this is one that you, you've been making for a while, right? Yeah, it's been like three, probably three years, I think. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's really... I, it's, I, I don't know, I've lost track. We yeah, made them no, a while. That's, that's okay, I'm just, just saying, like, this thing is... The reason I kind of want to focus on this folding mechanism is because this is where a lot of companies get it wrong. Um, it's not an easy thing to do because you got to get the tension right, then you can you can have too much spring in it to where guys can't fold it yeah or it's too loose and then it yeah guys it, have it shutting when they don't want it to shut or open when they don't want it to open it's only got to fold when you want it to that's that's the yeah that's the trick uh so, so yeah i mean that's 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 kind of a big one of the the big things on like for me like as a as a gunsmith i guess you can say one of the the things i focus on are, are things like that uh, whenever I get a new product or, or start looking at a product, and it was it was one of those things that I, I personally was just really impressed with, and it's the it's the weirdest thing, right? Like such a seemingly uh, inconsequential part. Well, yeah, but it's it'll make or break a product. It'll make or break a product, man. That's 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 the thing. Um, and as far as the actual attachment goes, um, I'll just I kind of wanted to to show because we we talked about attaching like the stocks and stuff to the knuckles if you look here this is the same folding mechanism they use on pretty much all of all of your your all the alpha series for sure um well we only yeah all the alpha any folding stock we make whether okay. it's the alpha series or the staps or any of the, it uses that knuckle okay perfect yeah and everything just mounts to it yep those two screws right there and yep boom yeah, yeah. i mean it it's one of those things, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You yeah. know, we, we sell a lot of those knuckles and they work great and we don't get hardly any complaints on them and I'm not changing them. Yeah, I mean, well, so, there you go. And uh, so when we started this new Alpha stock, the telescoping version, that was the starting place is, all right, we're going to design it around the proven knuckle and we went from there. Awesome, awesome. All right, so another thing... We mentioned very briefly, but I, I kind of want to want to get you to dig into just a little bit here, is the red dot mount on this one. Yep. So this is a T2 setup. Yep. I would assume with something like this, it wouldn't be too difficult to do Picatinny rail. So. Correct. Yeah. These four four uh, Torx head bolts come out, and uh, you just put a Picatinny insert in there instead of the T2 adapter. Um, with the T2, you still get a co-witness, lower one-third. You can still pull your top cover out to field strip your gun. Awesome. So it doesn't really hinder maintenance on your gun at all. Yeah, that was a big thing. Um, I kind of kind of wanted to get your, your two cents on was, you know, what do you got to do to do maintenance on this? Nothing. Nothing. You leave it there. Leave it there. Boom. Just push your button and then slide your cover right out to the rear. Bolt comes out, do what you need to do, reassemble it, bam, done. Awesome. Yeah, so let's, uh, real quick here. What, what about the future of AK stuff? What, what cool stuff? What, I mean, you did all this really cool AK stuff. I could assume... Uh, there's more coming. There's gears turning. Yep, yeah, there's more coming. You'll see more last quarter this year, first quarter next year. We've got some big parts and we've got some little parts. Okay. Put it that way. I but we're going to we're gonna keep expanding upon the line. Um, we're doing some testing on some simple stuff and we've got... Some newer hand guards coming out to kind of round out the line. Okay, yeah. I, I kind of got an idea of what it may be, but uh, y'all stay tuned and uh, see what, what cool stuff Midwest Industries has coming out for the AK, among other things. Yeah, uh, we've got a lot of stuff platforms. going. All right. Well, Troy, I appreciate you coming back out. I uh, can't wait to do this again. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, or you can just call Midwest Industries directly. They'll be happy to help you out as well. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.